look to me to be your leader, to guide you on this journey. But I'm no leader. I'm a follower, just like you. God has instructed me to stay here and wait for his sign. This is our time to prove through suffering that we are worthy of the miracle that's to come. The kingdom of heaven is coming. I promise you. Five thousand people, everyone offers her the law. You know how we keep order with those odds? They believe we're more powerful than we are. You cannot remove these people by force. The more you push them, the more they think it is a test of their faith. Well, the weapons are in there. Get creative if you have to. It's on the second floor. You gotta confirm. Right, I'm on it. I'm supposed to go in there to investigate the Davidians, but I end up really liking David and respecting him and what he's doing. David asks me to protect them. He knows that I'm an ATF agent and he wants me to save them. And I tried to stop everybody, nobody listens. They know you're coming! Stop! I become the fall guy of the whole thing. I become the guy that didn't warn them when I did warn them, and this guy's career was over. Known as the Branch Davidians, we had an undercover agent who had infiltrated their compound. But unfortunately, he didn't warn us that the cult was planning an attack. At the time of this, there was a real fight for the soul of the FBI. There were two schools of thought going on. There was a negotiation side, which Gary was on, and there was a tactical side. Gary and Mitch want the same thing at the end of the day. It's just two diametrically opposing views of how we're going to get there. It's going to be by force, or it's going to be by negotiation. Gary himself was not necessarily opposed to applying pressure in any situation. Uh, sometimes he thought it was beneficial and would actually help him do his job. But this was a very tense situation, dealing with the mistake that the ATF had made. The Davidians could argue that they really hadn't done anything wrong. And there were some quibbles about David's conduct in particular, but it really didn't warrant the kind of siege that Waco wound up becoming. You know as well as I do, the more firepower you get, the less chance I get to solve things peacefully. You really see yourself as some kind of Boy Scout, don't you? But you're digging in the same filth as the rest of us. God has instructed me to stay here. And whoever wants to leave, you're free to go. But those of thinking of going, you came here to be tested. And this is a test. That we are worthy of the miracle that's to come. To play this guy who's the most complex guy I've ever played in my life, it's incredible. What family means to him is it goes back to his upbringing or lack thereof with a mother who's 14 and comes from a fairly abusive upbringing and the purpose and the belonging that he had so needed. And I think that's where you create this family. Don't drive through the night. I got a place not far from here where a bunch of us stay with an extra room if you want. Thibodeau is a drummer and just comes across David and, and all of his charisma and is just gonna spend the night with him and then sort of falls in love with the Davidians. The priest at the church on Sunday is not relatable, but this guy, Koresh, is a rock star who's preaching. It's very unusual and you just, for some reason, open up to him. You don't even know why. Steve, professor of theology, amazing. You live with your wife, Judy, in paradise on the beach in Hawaii. Was that enough? Not even close. Not even close! For a lot of the people that were current when the siege happened were brought there by Steve. He gave a reassuring vibe to people that might be afraid of moving to the middle of nowhere and living in a shack. His relationship with Judy, they were thick as thieves. I mean, they really loved each other and they'd been trying to have a child. It's really important to them to have a child and they couldn't. I know you feel like this baby is a curse, but I gotta tell you, a miracle. The new light revelation that David was spoken to by God told him that he had to be in charge of fathering all the children. Of course, she gets pregnant immediately, and I think it was especially hard on Steve. But when, where are we vulnerable? Your sister Michelle marrying more than one woman is illegal. It's statutory rape. 
or it's polygamy. Rachel is 24. She's been married to Koresh for 10 years. She was sort of leader of the pack of women, and she was the only woman that would stand up to him every once in a while, that would question his authority, that would always voice her opinion, even if she knew he wouldn't hear it. But I have a hard time believing that any woman would be okay with their husband having a relationship with her younger sister as well and having children with her. I play Rachel's sister and David Crush's second wife, and she grew up here. This is what she knows. She doesn't think anything's wrong with it. She loves her sister, but I definitely think there is some jealousy there because of David, but it's not just her and her sister. It's all of the women. I think she loves David. I don't know how in love she is with him, though, because when Tibbs comes in the picture, she hasn't met another guy before, so she's used to David. That's all she knows. But then she sees this other guy, she's like, whoa, I like him. I'd rather pick him. What's that like, being married to David? It's like being married to the most special person in the world, but not being special yourself. 